Hey, what's going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video, I have the much-awaited Azir Guide, and this champion is so fun to play. He's probably, he's one of my favorite champions because his kit is so unique, and it's so different from any other champion, which I, I like it because of that, and in the video, I'm going to be talking about certain combos you can use on Azir, what you want to build on him, runes and masteries, all that kind of stuff, and much more, so... Without further ado, let's get right into it. First off, I'm just going to quickly go over his abilities, and you guys probably already know what they do, so if you don't, then I'm just going to leave a little description of them on screen, and you can read more in depth to them, but I'm just going to give a quick little overview here, and his passive, there's two parts to it. The first part, for every 1% cooldown reduction that he builds, he gets 1.25% attack speed, and also when an enemy turret dies or your turret dies, um, you can summon your own turret, but this doesn't work on Nexus Towers. Um, his W is the only ability that he can take at level 1, and it's the soldiers that he places on the ground. His Q is a makes his soldiers dash to a target location, and it slows the enemy for 25% if it hits them for 1 second. His E is his gap closer, and if it hits an enemy, it will knock them up and grant him a shield. And his ultimate is a huge wall of soldiers that can block off a certain location, and it's a really fun part of his kit, in my opinion. For ability maxing on Azir, max your Q first, your E second, and your W last. A common misconception when players start playing Azir is they think to max their W first, but... This is not what you want to do because his W does not scale every time you rank it up. If you put one rank in it, it's going to keep that same damage um, no matter if you put another rank in it. It scales with your champion's level, so the higher level you are as a champion, the higher damage it's going to do. So there's no point in maxing this out. You want to max your Q first because it gives you a decent amount of burst damage and good poke in lane. And then max your E second and taking your ultimate obviously at level 6, 11, and 16. Next let's talk about ability combos and how to react in certain situations when playing Azir. The first combo here is the W, Q, E combo. And this is a very useful combo if your enemies are going too aggressive against you or if they're in your minion wave. And you can use this to engage on them, and it gives you the shield, so you're going to out-trade them most of the time. Here again, the Yasuo comes too close to me, so I use this combo to engage and get a lot of poke off on him. And it's just a really good combo for punishing your opponent's um, positioning mistakes. The next combo is pretty simple, and it's the WQ, and then another auto-attack from your W combo. This is his main harass ability, and it's really easy to use, so make sure if your opponents are coming too close to use it to poke them down. And this next one is the exact same thing, except with two of your soldiers up. And be careful about using this if you're pushed out in lane, because you always want to have one soldier available if you're um, going out um, past the middle point in lane, because you want your escape, so be careful about using two soldiers. This next combo here is the W, Q, E, and then knock them back with the ultimate combo. You can use this if they go too aggressive on you and they're close to your tower to knock them back into tower range. In this situation here, the Vi comes in and ults me, and I just calmly walk away and use my ultimate. And it's really hard to gank an Azir at level, of six, because, at level 6 because of his ultimate, and he can pretty much escape out of any situation. Right here, I'm getting out damaged by the Corky, so I just use my ultimate, and here is his W, Q, E, escape combo, and you can use this to get out of sticky situations, which I do right there. Make sure you're using this if you, and you can also use this over walls, so make sure you're using it to get over walls as well. And be careful about going too hard on Azir. You don't want to be diving him, especially once he hits level 6, unless you know it, you can pick up a quill a kill really quickly because he does have a lot of chance to kill you under tower so be careful about that. For summoner spells there's nothing really special to it. If you're going for kill pressure in lane and you want to press your advantage then go flash and ignite. 
If you want to have a safer laning phase or you feel like you won't be able to kill your opponent, then take Flash Heal. And if you want map pressure, then take Flash and Teleport. Next, let's talk about items on Azir. So starting out, you want to pick up a Dorm's Ring, two pots, and a trinket. That's pretty standard. However, if you're going up against a poke-heavy opponent like Zareth or Ziggs, then picking up a Crystalline Flask would be your best choice because you won't have much kill pressure on them in lane. So getting that sustain from their poke will be really nice. For boots, picking up Ionian Boots of Lucidity seems like a no-brainer on Azir because it gives him that CDR, which converts into attack speed, and it works really well on him, so I don't see why you should pick up any other boots than those. On your first back, pick up a Chalice or a Phoenix Codex. If you're going up against an AP mid laner, then pick up the Chalice. However, if you're going up against an AD, then pick up the Phoenix Codex. Your core items versus AP champions should consist of a Athene's Unholy Grail, a Void Staff, a Rabadon's, and a Nasher's Tooth. You don't want to rush the Nasher's Tooth on Azir because it doesn't give you those combat stats. The Chalice gives you AP, it gives you the mana regen, and it gives you magic resist. And it also gives you CDR, which works well with his passive. So um, Azir does run on quite a bit of mana, and picking up the Nasher's Tooth first will not help him with that. You'll run really short on mana, so definitely pick up the Chalice first. And then if your opponents are building a Chalice against you, then pick up the Void Staff next to negate that. And as for your next item, if you feel like the Nasher's Tooth is a good item for you, and you feel like that, that attack speed from it works well, then you can pick that up. But if not, then pick up the Rabadons next and then the Nasher's Tooth. Core versus AD, pick up the Morella Nomicon first, because it's going to give you that CDR that works well with his passive and it also gives you some of that mana regen. Next, you can either pick up the Zhonyas or the Rabadons if um, their team is pretty heavy AD, um, not just their mid laner, then pick up the Zhonyas because it's going to help for against that. And you can either pick up the Nasher's Tooth or the Rabadons next, depending on what you feel is best in a certain situation. Um, for situational items, the Rod of Ages, if you feel like you're getting blown up in teamfights and you need that extra health, then pick up the Rod of Ages as your first item on Azir. I wouldn't recommend it, but if you, like I said, if you feel like you don't have enough health in teamfights, then you should probably go for that. For the Rylies, it should be your fifth or sixth item on Azir. Um, it helps a lot because it does give you that health, and it also gives you the slow from his soldiers. The Leandries is also a good choice if you don't want that slow, but if you want the extra health and the magic penetration, then pick up Leandries. Frozen Heart, if your enemy team is really fed and they're all AD, then pick up the Frozen Heart because it will give you that cooldown reduction and a lot of armor as well. And if they're heavy AP, then pick up a Banshee's Veil because it will negate a lot of that. So those are the general item builds for Azir. And next, let's move on to Runes and Masteries. For Runes and Masteries, I'm taking the pages directly from a Korean Challenger solo queue player, and he's been playing Azir non-stop for the last couple of days, so I think it's safe to say that he has a good idea on what's best for the champion. For Marks, he's taking Magic Penetration. For Seals, Health per level. For Glyphs, he's taking ability power for level and quintessences he's taking straight ability power and if you have the ip to purchase these then they are the best runes for azir at this point for masteries he's taking 2109 making sure that you're taking the cooldown reduction in the offense and the mana regeneration in utility it helps a lot obviously with his passive when you take the cooldown reduction and he Benefits quite a bit from the mana regeneration as he does run on a decent amount of mana. Last but not least, I'm just going to give you a few final thoughts on Azir and a couple of quick tips to hopefully improve your play on him. I definitely think he's a very unique champion and he does take a while to get used to because of that. Don't expect on your first couple of games to just absolutely start wrecking as Azir. He takes a while to get used to and you shouldn't expect too much in your first in your first few games playing him. For matchups on Azir, he 
doesn't do too well against ranged champions like Ziggs and Zareth because he can't get in range of them to poke them down at all. He does do well against champions who are melee because he can zone them early game from the CS. However, once assassins like Fizz and Zed and Yasuo hit level 6, you have to be careful that they're not jumping onto you because they can burst you down pretty quickly, and because Azir is a DPS champion, he won't be able to trade damage very well. So just make sure that you are zoning the melee champions away from CS with your soldiers. And some a few little tips here. You can use your W, which is your soldier, to grant you vision. So rather than face checking a bush, you can plant your soldier over a wall to check if the enemies are there. And make sure that you're using your ultimate to disengage fights or block your opponents off from a high traffic area. Um, you can use your ultimate to block enemies inside of Dragon, inside of Baron, or just block off a general area so that your teammates can escape. And this is probably the best way to use Azir's ultimate. So yeah, that's it for the video guys. If you enjoyed, then be sure to like and subscribe for more League of Legends content, and I will see you in my next video.